With these past three months of refactoring, I've had one looming thought that towers over all others. What makes Fargon Frontier unique? Beyond getting the constant visual comparison to enter the gungeon, my game has always been an amalgamation of can I do that, followed up by oh, okay I did it but now it's impossible to work with or to add on to, without ever taking that big step back to see what the game's all about. When I finally asked myself what makes Fargon Frontier unique, what makes it fun, my brain was kind of drawing a blank. Which is not a good feeling, to be honest. The closest thing I could come up with were all these guns and weapon mods. Don't get me wrong, I know it's not the most unique thing ever, but if I'm gonna pick something to really lean into, this is the no-brainer. The problem is, A, the code is ultra spaghettified, and B, the gameplay of revolving the mods has never really been there. All right, well, let's get it there. With one of the last few refactors left, let's inject some personality into Fargon Frontier. So the plan was never to remake everything. Originally, I just started off with the main character and some of the environments, mainly because I couldn't build on what I already had. But the weapon and mod system has always been looming in the background. I always wanted to fix it, and it's always been a garbage fire. But how do you know when you should rewrite code? Like, where's the line? The old mod system was technically working. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But the more it stayed around and the more I could playtest with it, the more I realized it wasn't really fun. The glaring issue is that you could only pick up so many mods. It's one thing to say you can only equip so many, but to only hold so many? That, that never felt right. It was also built with this drag and drop framework work, which is kind of cool, I guess, but I want the game playable with a controller, so this method doesn't really make sense. Okay, and, and lastly, not to overscope it, but this all felt a little boring. I noticed that every mod has its own category, but I never actually utilize it for the gameplay. Like when you pick up a mod, it either goes onto the barrel, the clip, or the scope visually, but it never had any gameplay significance, and I'm starting to think, why not? I took a couple days to take this all in. I didn't want to start working on a system without some kind of vision. And in the meantime, I start reworking the guns, which you might be thinking, didn't you add a lot of guns to the game? Isn't that going to be a lot of work to redo? And uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. On the bright side, I still have all the arts, so I can just plug that in when everything's done. And the bullets that the gun makes are still there. It's really just about having an ultra clean rewrite of the gun class and also fixing some of those little things that I missed. One of those was a better way to handle how I drop anything in the game. Uh, typically, the item, whatever it was, would just spawn on the ground, but I was always running through issues where things could kind of force their ways through walls. At one point, I drew this little animation in Photoshop, but I never implemented it. So I figured, what better time than now to make it look cool? One comment that I get all the time is that I'm doing way too much inheritance and not enough composition. I, I think that's what it's called. My basic understanding is that inheritance is when you have a class and multiple nodes are going to inherit from that class, as opposed to composition where you could just have a node that does a specific thing and dynamically use it wherever a node needs that certain thing to happen. And now seems as good a time as any to give that a shot. So instead of writing all this code on the weapon class like I typically would do, I put together this kinematic spawn node. Its sole purpose is to exist on any kinematic body, handle all the movement, and then just have a variable that says landed and we make that true once it's stopped. The cool thing here is that going forward I can use these for mods or anything else I want to drop on the floor. So super cool, I'm doing what you guys yelled at me to do probably a year ago now. Speaking of things you guys always yelled at me to do, uh, static typing. This shit is, uh, is dope. This is good. I like this stuff. I can't lie. At first, I was a hater. I, I thought it was stupid. But I mean, maybe the, the second I realized that you could tell Godot that a node was a custom class, and then it knows all the functions that that custom class has, that sold me. I can't lie. Plus, everything feels cleaner now. I feel like I'm, I'm doing things right. Yeah, alright, that's it. No more glazing static typing. But if you're not doing that, you, sh you should do that. Also, I know this might be a little weird here, but the reason why I'm using kinematic bodies for weapons that are on the ground is because, A, I want them to move, and I don't want them moving into walls or places you can't reach. And then secondly, I want them to bounce off things. Because they're kinematic bodies, they're automatically going to work with stuff like the TNT, or even just not getting stacked on top of each other. But I'm not doing this as a gameplay mechanic, instead I'm just trying to give the game more personality. And also, it makes everything feel really grounded. Like, things really do exist in this world, and when you do something, they're affected by them. One last decision I finally made is to cut out the leveling up system. It was always tacked on at the end, and all it did was make it so you could hold more mods, which, while it was useful, I think I'm trying to go in a different direction. While I'm going to add some complexity by doing these mod categories, I think it makes sense to simplify other things that just weren't working. Now, with the weapon system in a good place, I can finally move on to the purpose of this video, remaking the mod system. Doing all these refactors has honestly been pretty grueling. There's always so much to learn, and so many different skills to have when making games. Luckily, there's help out there, like the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. I can't lie, all the refactoring of my code has driven me pretty crazy. The code has been the last thing I wanted to look at after doing these refactors. So instead, I use Skillshare just to brush up on my drawing. It's something I've never felt that confident about, even though I say I'm more of an artist than a coder. But with the near endless amount of classes that Skillshare has to offer, it took no time at all before I found one that really spoke to me. Plus, I personally really enjoy 
enjoy having a sketchbook that I fill out over time. And the classes in Skillshare give me a great reason to add more to it. Of course, it's not just art, it's music, it's coding. The classes for Godot, Unity, and Unreal, they also have learning paths. They're curated classes focusing on helping you master a certain skill. I always felt that they add a nice sense of progression to your learning. It's a great way to support the channel, and the first 500 members get one month free. I just want to thank Skillshare so much for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get into it. When looking at the issue with mods, I realized I'm going to break it down to these three basic parts. The mod existing on the ground, that same mod existing on the UI, and lastly, this little visual indicator I put on the gun. I always liked how stupid this looked once you had like 10 mods. So yeah, we're, we're not going to lose that. I start with the floor mod because it's so similar to the floor gun. Oh, look at that. We get to steal our little composition note I talked about making earlier. <laughs> this technique's already, it's paying off in dividends here. Originally, I had this item pedestal saved out as this yellow, but I realized if we just save it out as black and white, then we can color change it according to what kind of mod we have. It feels like a good visual way to show what mod is what category. And speaking of categories, this is definitely the biggest change for the mod system so far. I lamented before about how I want every mod to be useful on every gun. And I would say things like, well, I guess guns have to always have ammo, even if it's a melee gun, because how could you equip a mod that gives you more ammo when you don't have ammo? But leaning into categories actually solves this problem. It takes something like the fish weapon. When using mods that added more ammo to it, my two options were either A, don't do anything, or B, force a weapon that didn't want ammo to have to use ammo. And that never made any sense. But with this new system, I can just say the fish weapon doesn't get any mods from that class. And we just set the maximum mods for that category to zero. As soon as I came up with this idea, I, I immediately fell in love. Because this means we can take guns and push them in interesting ways and then have drawbacks like they just can't hold this mod or maybe they can't hold any mod. Also, from here, I decided I should take the three categories of mods and try to ascribe to them unique rules and effects that only they can do. I started to jot down some notes on what would be interesting to have in certain categories. Barrel could be mostly for damage, clip for ammo and reloading, and scope for range and also maybe some weird techie stuff, like maybe auto aim, which I actually have in the game on this old gun. That's actually one of the few benefits on working on a game for so long that I can actually go take this old code and repurpose it pretty easily. Okay, so that's the overall arching idea. How do I take it and make it come to life? One answer, uh, control nodes. I have a very love-hate relationship with control nodes. For some reason, they never act how you think they might, but then at the same time, once things start to work correctly, they're incredibly powerful. And most notably, the old mod system menu didn't really use control nodes at all. Like, there was a grid of inventory slots, but everything's using area 2Ds, and this would break constantly. There was also the idea that collision doesn't get detected on the first frame, so a lot of my old code had yielding to make up for that, which is just when you tell the code, like, hey, just chill out for a second. I'm not sure if that's a uh, bad practice, but I fucking hated that. Going into this mod menu rework, my goal is to not use any yields at all, and instead use something named call deferred. It's a method that delays the execution of a function until the physics processing, the signals, and the events are completed. Listen, I, I said this video was going to be a nerdy one. This is what you're getting. Random strangers online have said that this is how you should do things, and I'm an idiot, so I'm listening to them, and I'll report back on how that goes. So I put together a new grid-based menu, but instead now it's using all control nodes, and it looks like garbage. That's okay. When you make stuff, it's better that it looks bad and you're sad, because then you got something to work towards, I think. Maybe? Okay, we gotta give it one more pass. Not just because it looks really bad, but this is still drag and drop, so it's not gonna work with a controller. And more importantly, what dawned on me is that I want to be able to hold infinite things. It's time to throw out these little circle grid-based things. Instead, I focus way more on the mod, and make everything color-based, throw out these goofy texts that say barrel and clip and bullshit. It's all icons now, readings for losers, and let's uh, spiff it up with this unnecessary animation when you open the mod menu. Now we're talking, this game is never coming out, is it? Uh, look at all these mods, they're all working, you can equip them, and you can drop them, and you don't even have to use a mouse at all. Everything's actually working really well. And, this is the really important part, when I reload the scene, or load a new scene, we keep all our mods. What's funny is that the old version was even worse than I'm describing. It wasn't just when you loaded a new scene, in fact, whenever you picked up a new gun, all the mods you had, it would retain a list of them. Then it would spawn them as if they came from the shop, set their cost to zero, and then make the player purchase them. No, I'm, I'm fucking serious, it literally was doing this for a year. You guys are like, hey, I wanna make games like you. No, you don't. You don't wanna do any of this. It's bad. And little things like that give me hope for making an actual game. You have no idea how often I make a system and just think, is this gonna break as soon as I load one scene? And I, I just take those emotions and I push them down. Not this time, though. This time, it feels good. That's kind of the theme on most of these reworks is that I wanna make things that feel scalable. Even if they're less cool, I I'm tired of making things that just make me depressed because of how incredibly unreasonable they be to extend throughout a whole game. And I don't wanna jinx myself, but I think this marks the end of most of the big reworks. I think the last thing that's left is the lantern system, but it's not really necessary for me to have a pretty decent gameplay loop. So wish me luck. My current goal is to add back in two guns to this new system. If I could get up to 10 mods, that'd be great, but start putting stuff together to make what is essentially the main game. And obviously from their testing, which I've been putting off because I'm pretty worried. I have so much work to do, but for now, that's where I'm at. I thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to my Patreon members. You guys are the best. Let me know if you want me to do any more tutorials or have any questions on how I make most of this stuff. I think hopefully I'm getting better at it, so I feel a little more confident sharing. All right, until next time, guys, I'll see you later.